System 333 on air. Today we're going live for the first time. I've got Daniel John Allen here, uh, a, a great personality that we've seen on social media in recent weeks, um, has a lot of great content he's been putting on his Instagram and Facebook, um, focuses on, on overall well-being for people through um, spiritually, mentally and uh, physical health practices. Some of the stuff I highly recommend um, that I've seen in the content is provided. Welcome to the show, Daniel, and thank you for actually um, making this happen live on StreamYard. First time we're using it. How are you going? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Um, yeah, just a lot's happening, and I think we're going to dive into a lot of interesting topics today, and I'm psyched to be here, man, and discuss small things, you know, about awareness, spirituality, you know, what it really means, and you know, what it is to be, I guess, overall healthy, you know, looking at the bigger picture as opposed to just a surface level. So, yeah, really excited. Absolutely. Look, with uh, and you're, you're also based in Sydney, so we share a similar human experience. Um, mm. Living in the same city, as we all know that Sydney have had a recent coronavirus outbreak, which we'll, I'm sure we'll, we'll get uh, through um, discussing a bit on that. Um, what what, what um, I would first like to address is, you know, pandemic... It's been almost one year, really started off, I guess, for us in Sydney at the end of March. Um, so let's just say in the last year, since the start of the pandemic, um, what have you been focusing on in regards to your you know, physical well-being, mental well-being, spirituality? Um, How has that walk been, that journey been um, over this period of time? Great question, man. So as you know, this thing has taken over a lot of people's lives and affected us on so many levels and so for me really was to focus more on my internal world mm -hmm. you know because a lot of us you know when we when we get stressed over this this greater uh, this COVID-19 we tend to look externally for answers and kind of just you know shut off our internal world and not really and lose the focus of being in the present so over the last year I've just been focusing a lot on meditation, a lot of journaling, a lot of exercising, getting lots of nature in, connecting with people, especially connecting with people, you know, who um, are like-minded, who understand your path, who want to grow. Um, recently, Rest in Paradise, I lost a, a friend in um, high school because, you know, as you know, with young men, we tend to have, we tend to bash ourselves um, because of the standard that we have, you know, for ourselves, right? So um, looking after our mental health and staying connected, you know, being in a community and just really focusing on our inner world, that's what really got me through um, the last year. Yeah, I've got to admit, um, uh, you know, what, what you mentioned about the external and internal world. Um, today, mm. I put up a Facebook post and um, I did this in yeah. regard to... Um, a dream that I had, which I'd like to um, get into a bit later. Uh, yeah. But it says, this was a trip I did in Greece back at the end yeah. of 2018. And, you know, don't know if you know, my background's Greek. So, you know, I've gone to and fro from there. Um, you know, basically, uh, I would choose to live there. Um, mm. Had the situation not turned out the way it did yeah. in this pandemic, um, Dan. Yeah. But one thing I took away with me from my last visit to Greece, not knowing when I would be back, yeah. was... To know that the external world remains unchanged whilst the internal world transcends. The oh. path of intuition proposes that history will write itself as life is a full circle. Um, for the blood for the prophets came, spoke and shed their blood for the sake of humanity in hope that this that in hope that one day this cycle may end. Now the first part that I want to look at about what you said about the external world and um, then the internal world. So look, when I dated, um, I guess the external world remains unchanged. It's history as we know it has always shown that there's going to be pockets of incidents that will have a oppressing effect on humanity, uh, on the collective, yeah. um, whether it's, yeah. you know, a collective in one country, country a collective in one continent, mm. um, or now we're looking at a global collective oppression. Mm. Um what we have to understand is these patterns of, of, of life as we know it in the human experience are very much um, a, a foundation for us understanding the external world, right? So 
once we can see that, that things don't really change, just a continuous pattern, mm. cycle, cycles yeah. of life. Uh, yeah. And we, you know, we know this from, from reading history. I'm a history major. So I really started picking out some of these real concepts. And yeah. then I realized, well, what can you do as an individual? Uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic. What can you do? And that's work on your internal world. That's something that yeah. you've been pri primarily focusing on, um, yeah. building a strong internal structure. Um, yeah. What type of practices have you been doing um, to, to help you um, build that foundation? Yeah, so really it was just to get grounded in my my inner world and ensuring that I don't have my head above the clouds because, as you know, for people who go through quote unquote, an awakening and a, reali and a realization of how catastrophic or how chaotic the world really is. Because, you know, a lot of us tend to put that aside and think, you know, life is roses and fucking butterflies and all that kind of stuff. Grounding for me was through, like I said previously, meditation, man, and really setting the zone in having a structure in my routine and lifestyle. So, when it comes to creating that foundation, every day, like I've got to, I've got to start my day off with meditation, or at least get myself out in nature and regroup, and come back to myself, to the source, to the energy within, because that's the energy that perpetrates everything. And through that, when we understand that, we know that we create, we create our realities. Instead of focusing on externally, you know, those all the negative things in the world. We can change that by being who we are at the core, by coming back to ourselves, by being present, by focusing on our surroundings from the inside out. So meditation is super powerful. I've, it, it's just been a game changer for me um, since, I guess, having my own experience in my own journey. So that's been a super powerful um, tool for me anyways. Yeah, meditation I found was very much um, a great practice to have more acuity and clarity about the nature of um, how the world unfolds in front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as the longer you're able to maintain that meditative state, yeah. the, the, the better it becomes for your life, right? And I believe that's yeah. why, you know, meditation, trying to keep it as a, as a routine or practice is beneficial. I, I mean, I've got to admit, I'm... There are times I'm super disciplined and other times I don't do it. Yeah. But I feel like these type of things end up re reinvigorating in your life from time to time to be able to move yeah. it to the next level. Yeah. In in general with meditation, um, I mean, I guess there are so many different ways of ways of doing it. I've, I've mm -hmm. got um, a mate who's got a very great, uh, I guess, I mean, a great um, voice clip on how he likes to see meditation. Um, mm. It's so deep um, that, you know, I have to listen to it multiple times just to remind myself. How do yeah. you see meditation in terms of its nature? Yeah, so very good question. So the other thing I like to add is as well is shadow work. But I'll answer your question first. So shadow work, meditation, yeah. yeah. So meditation, a lot of people think you just got to sit down, you know, put yourself in a posing position and that's it. Like Meditation is merely just being in a state of awareness of your environment and not allowing the external to change your internal world. So focusing on your thoughts on higher vibrational thoughts, higher vibrational feelings, because essentially when you meditate, you are putting yourself in a position where you can affect the environment based on your own vibration. So, you know, when you're, when you put yourself in that practice, think of, positive thoughts, think of affirm, think of um, speaking, speak thoughts to yourself that literally affect your internal world because everything that we see began as a thought, right? So everything began as a concept. And so how I do it is really just I'll throw on some either hemi synchronizations. So that is basically a frequency that connects your left side and your right side brain so your logical mind and your imaginative your creative mind and putting in a state of coherence so i have a state of balance balancing the yin balancing correct. the yang right so really it's just it, it doesn't even have to be first thing in the morning you can meditate 
Right now, you can meditate in the shopping center. You can meditate at the park, wherever it is. I feel like I'm when I'm walking, when I'm walking, like just mm. regular life, that I'm just meditating. Like I'm literally yes. in a meditative yeah. state. Like yeah. <laughs> that's how it's become yeah. now. But it's it, it pretty cool. Like yeah, <laughs> it's it bloody cool. I'll tell you that. So yeah. I mean, just about balance. That was a word you mentioned. So mm. system three 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 was essentially what I would say as bridging duality right mm -hmm. and i've got some of this coming out in my um new eight episode podcast that i'll have released it with sim in the next few weeks but the way i see this dan is the bridging of duality was the method to what developed the model of system 333 and i know you probably ask me um where does the 333 come from and you know we can look at numerology which i know you've probably mm -hmm. done a fair bit of work in Really what it came from was, you see, when we had the actual draft image drawn out and took a look, when I looked at it as a macro, like, because I felt like when I had it in front of me, I was in, in it, inside it. But yeah. then I took a step back, looked yeah. at the macro and realized this whole thing is one object with three components maintaining mm. its foundation. Yep. These three components are bridging duality, which is the subjective and the objective. Yeah. But what is the actual thing bridging it? And that was this human mm. experience because yeah. in order for us to experience the objective and subjective, we need to be living this human experience, right? Yeah. So right. that's where system 333 came in. Now, the numbers was, well, this is one thing, but what is, what is more impor important? Is the human experience more important? Is the subjective more important? Is the objective more important? We realized all of them were just equally as balanced as each other. Yeah. <laughs> and a part of meditation yeah. <laughs> really gets you to that balance. So that's why it became one divided by three and it and it just became 0.3. All I saw were these numbers, 0.333, mm. 0.333, 0.333. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how yeah. system 333 came about. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Yeah. It pretty much linked to uh, Nikola Tesla's discovery. Yeah, as you know, if you want to learn the quoted by Nikola Tesla, if you want to know and understand the secrets of the universe, think in terms of frequency, energy, and uh, vibration. And 369 were the most powerful findings in his discovery. You know, when you look at a triangle, um, it's got three angles, you know, add up the angles, four, five, you get nine, times that by three, you get 27, you get back to nine, it comes back to three. And yeah, man, you, you're on, you're on it, you're on the number game. There's a funny music video that I'll send to you after. It's called yeah. 999. You, you've got to see it. Yeah. It's from Square One. It's hilarious. <laughs> but it kind of says it all comes. You get 27, you got 36. It kind of has the way you just explained <laughs> it. And next thing you yeah. know, it goes from nine to three. So with yeah. um, now with the numer so with the numerology, mm. I want to actually speak about one number today. In okay. aside from system three three three, but just on yeah. the numerology, I mm. want to talk about the number 666, all right? Because, yeah. I mean, look, call it as you will, man. Uh, a lot of stuff's coming out there about what's yeah. going on in the world right now. Yeah. Um, I personally got into reading about um, prophecies and um, mm. book of revelations and all that when I was... Um, yeah. When I was 16, I don't know what your beliefs are, what your ideas are, but I've, you know, I've read a whole bunch of material, Dan. Um, mm. What is the significance of the number six? And what about 666? And what does that mean for us today? So there's a lot of fear-based, fear-mongering around the, the number 666. The simplest way to look at it is the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons. You've got six of those components that make up what would be, um, I think it's the God particle. I'm not quite sure, but essentially, basically the what the Bible has done is turned it into a sort of the mark of the beast. You know, like it's it's a negative when really in, in reality, it's just the components that make up melanin, okay? So melanin, that's the one, melanin. And from what I've discovered from my own personal experience, I've found that people with higher melanin, and I'm not sure if it's something to do with the light, the UV rays, when you're more exposed to sun, you get far more synchronicity. You get more awake. You get more coincidences. You, you get more downloads. You get from, from, that's from what I've observed in my own experience and from what I've from learned. But yeah, essentially it's just the components of uh, the uh, melanin. So 
But yeah, what's what's your take on it, man? What's your take? Look, I don't think. I mean, I don't think six is a bad number. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think we're being very subjective when we just view six mm. as that number. Yeah. I think, and I also think, even in the context of the number six six six, when it's described in that passage, right? Mm. It's not the number of six is bad. You know what no. I mean? It's not that the number yeah. six is bad. It's yeah what the number equates to the, the number has some sort of significance but mm. it was um it it, it it it's there to explain something deeper that we need to understand it's not saying the number six mm. is bad you know that that's mm. kind of what the people are thinking six 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 yeah. the devil yeah. Uh, it, yeah i find that comical man i make that as yeah. a joke like I, yeah. I remember like whenever i think oh my god the devil the devil but yeah, there is yeah. significance to that number and yeah. why it indicates the mark of the beast. Mm. But I think it comes a lot from, okay, and if we were to look at the context, which will bring me to kind of the, the next topic, I believe, you know, yeah. you said more downloads, you said you get more information. I believe that it, you start operating to see the matrix a little more. Mm. Um, yeah. And like I said, you download more information, you have yeah. more access to stuff. Yeah. And the reason is either you're in it, Mm. or you're out of it right yeah you're in it or yeah. you're out of it if you've, and if yeah. you've worked that number out that you don't then mm. you won't get this mark because you're not in the matrix i think it's yeah. the difference between uh, in or out you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah for sure and i think it also stems from um you know when you go down that rabbit hole of walt disney and you know the things the subliminal things you see about it is that in the in the the logo of walt disney um you can see 666 and i think a lot of that's where a lot of the fear comes from as well. So, but yeah, you're absolutely right, man. It's, it's just, it is a number and they do represent something. It's, and there's always going to be some deeper meaning behind it. Definitely. And look, we can't guarantee what it is and isn't about, yeah. but yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I just thought that I'd throw that out as an idea um, yeah. that it being, uh, whether it's been unplugged or replugged, but there is something mm. to it that definitely shows us type of state of awareness, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. A proper state of awareness, however you want to frame that. Now, with that yeah. being said, we talk about frequency, state of the awareness, um, you know, mm. meditation, you believe it, 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 it's one of those great practices to help you there. Uh, and a lot of other people that have come on my podcast have said the same thing, Dan. So that yeah. seems to be a common theme. Yeah. I haven't had too much on my podcast discussed on synchronicity and frequency yes. um, okay. alike. I know Ignis from America came on and spoke a bit about yeah. it. Um, yeah. had a very good insight to it. Yeah. What, what, what's your opinion on why is it that as you be, reach this level of state of awareness, all of a sudden yeah. everything starts unfolding? These coincidences are no longer coincidences. Mm. What is the magic behind that? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? So, really, it's a way of the universe kind of verifying you're on the right path. So, synchronicities was originally coined by Carl Jung, you know, Jung, famous yeah. like famous psychologist who discovered that when he was with a patient and the, the patient was describing their dream uh, and described the color yellow and as she described that a yellow bug came into the room and from then on he just went into the rabbit hole of what this actually meant and so for the skeptics out there it, it is hard to to see these kind of things because from a scientific point of view we can look at it as um, the reticular activating system. So a part of our brain, you know, um, will filter out information. We're in the world because we're constantly bombarded with, you know, data constantly, right? And so when we're looking for a specific thing or we're on a freq certain frequency, we only see what we want to see. So for example, if you want to, if you think of yellow cars, you're out of out on the road, you're going to see yellow cars more often. That's the logical side behind it. But from my, from my own personal experience, um, any time that I've ever kind of tuned in, aligned, I've gone with the flow, I've let things go, especially letting go, letting go of control, things just start to kind of magically happen. Things go into flow. You start, you, you think of a word, it comes up on like the radio or you think of someone, they call you and things like that. And so... The powerful thing about it is just really just it's just to verify that yes you're on the right path keep going whether that be through angel numbers music whether that be you know certain experiences where you want to manifest thing 
um, based on your own thought, you know, you want to attract something through your vibration. Um, synchronicities is merely just the the joke of the universe, like haha, like cosmic giggle. Like, yeah, exactly, pretty much. The cosmic giggle. Yeah, and look, I've yeah. I've started noticing the patterns that I've seen. Um, whether it means noticing patterns in numbers, noticing patterns patterns in just meeting certain people at certain times, mm. certain periods mm. of life. Um, for example, I saw your you know video shared on um, this girl's page uh, on our Facebook, and I'm just like, oh, yeah. that's really cool. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> been following your stuff too, uh, yeah. and like that was you know that was random, and I was just like, oh, we're doing you know, and I was like, yeah, we're doing something in a few days. Like, how yeah. cool is that? Yeah. Like, that was like a cosmic yeah. giggle moment for me, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> with with um with that being said, uh, and just taking a look. Um, you know, deeper into what is what is going on at the moment. Now, we are, I mentioned we're in a matrix. However you want to say yeah. that you're aware you're in a matrix, whether you're mm. in it or, or out of it. Yeah. Um, when was your first realization that you were living in some simulation yeah. in, this, in this mode of modality of life? Good question. So this was about, I had a couple of breakthroughs. My first one was in 2010. I went cold turkey from weed i became a little bit schizo i thought i was schizo but really i was just re realizing the lucidity of the world i started to realize that's how... what happens when that sounds normal what happens when you you know you come off the green you yeah. become more hyper aware of the world yeah yeah so that was Crazy. that and i wasn't really exposed to like spirituality and and things like that so i kind of just dropped it off focus and so i could forget about it and then a few years later um 2017 started dating this um this spirit, like full spiritual gypsy chick, and she really exposed me to, I guess, the the mystery of the world. And so I had these like, in absolutely mind blowing um, synchronicities. Like for example, um, when she was in Canada and I was here in Australia, um, I was imagining like I was salsa dancing with her, right? I was in the shower, I was like full getting into it. I was like, like, this is so weird, but like, it feels like so real. The next day we talk on the phone and she tells me that we had a salsa dance. And from then on, I'm like, what the fuck? This is, this is weird. Like, how is that yeah. possible? So, you know, you go down the rabbit hole, like, you know, like telepathy and yada, yada, yada. And then you kind of realize like, shit, there's been a veil, like, over me this whole time how come we've never been taught this information how come we've never been exposed to just how i guess infinite this reality is like how multi-dimensional it is and how how it's just expansive it is when you place that awareness on it and so yeah three years ago i just went down the rabbit hole and started to realize holy shit there's systems in place there are there are rules that I've been following for what reason I've been doing, living a certain lifestyle for whatever reason and kind of just recondition the mind from then and start to see, okay, well, you can go win it. Like you said, you can be in the, you can be in the world, but not of the world and kind of just know when to tune in and tune out. So yeah. Oh, the other thing was also MDMA that kind of really helped me. Yeah. MDMA Man. really, it helped me, it, it helped me, realize just how one we are with the world and that, that kind me. of just helped me yeah and that and from then it's like okay well everything all this separateness is just an illusion that we create so yeah well you know what it sounds like you know i, I relate man um yeah one thing i started realizing okay just with mdma what well, now that you mm. mentioned it was I started getting into the, and this start. I remember this started like when I was in my early twenties. Like I seen yeah. it when I'm thirty now, so it was like when I was twenty one, twenty two. Yeah. I started um, basically picking up on people's real energies, real energies, man. Um, mm. I start and I started realizing that from miles away. You know, um, mm. I could tell if somebody was like a vampire. Just these archetypes within the collective unconscious, I could start seeing all that. And that would put me in a free, you know what I mean? Like, put me in like yeah. this high frequency. It sounds crazy, but I could see the energy of people. People who had angelic yeah. nature, people who had mm -hmm. like vampire nature, people yeah. who had kind of, um, you know, very placid nature, serene. It was very yeah. interesting. Um, yeah. But I remember the vampire one specifically. <laughs> if my mate Ibo's watching this because we are live and I did send him the link. Yeah. Um, 
he'll remember the vampire's lair we experienced um, at a hotel. <laughs> some, I think it was somewhere in Surrey Hills. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah. but we were both on that uh, vibing on that same frequency. Like he saw what I could see, and it was just like this is this is really interesting. I mean, they're not yeah. uh, they're just you're able to pick up on people's inner energy, internal yeah. world. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, interesting you say that. Like, I've also had some, I guess, I've had some experiences where I've seen shadows. And especially it's when you kind of tune into that, that frequency, when you think of certain things. Now, some people think, oh, well, you're just kind of tripping out. Your, your mind's hallucinating, which, fair enough, open to that suggestion. However, from my own personal experience, I've had a few times where I kind of like felt, literally felt, orbs in my hand and had another person literally verif like validate that like feeling an energy come around or i'll see a shadow there and i'm thinking what the fuck am i literally am i crazy or am i just seeing things and obviously have other people say that but yeah it just it just sounds to me it just sounds like you're like hyper aware you're hypersensitive to or you're empathic would be the key word you're empathic to people's nature and we will have auras we will have you know we we have we we emit a certain energy and you can you can get photograph photographic images to to see that you know what colors represent certain types of energy as well so yeah it's interesting um it's something that definitely like once i started um trying to really figure out the simulation the mm. matrix for it, it was mm. something that i um went, went yeah I, I i seriously noticed that there, there were mm. these frequencies i was tapping yeah. tapping into yeah. um I'm just looking here now. So with um, with okay. So I really started thinking about this over the last, I guess. I mean, well, since the pan, I've thought about this for years, but since, yeah. since the last few weeks, it's become more apparent. And main reason is, is because um, I had a bit of a holiday, a bit of a break, gives you more time to think about stuff. Yeah. Then you had this Sydney coronavirus outbreak, which I want yeah. to get to. Yeah. So, what is really going on in terms of people's psyche right now where we live in Sydney? Mm. Well, so from what I've gathered, it's not just Sydney, but the collective consciousness. So a lot of what we are seeing is, if you want to get like, including the deep shit that we've been exposed to in the rabbit holes, um, is a lot of the subconscious mind. It's a lot of, you know, what we allow, but Back to Sydney, um, what we're seeing is merely a test, a testing ground, just like they did in um, Victoria. And so what's happening is just what we're allowing. And for as long as we allow this outbreak for us, what we perceive it to be, like you could, you can say it's the most infectious disease, but the facts are it's, it's something that's, um, that only has less than 1% chance of killing you um yeah it just seems outrageous for me that we have to go through this uh these mandatory regulations when in reality it, it isn't that dangerous but yeah it just to me it looks like it's uh, another testing ground like uh victoria it seems to me that there's just this level of spiritual compliance like, you know, the level of compliance someone has or a collective mm. to be able to um, respond to the external world. And mm. that's why I, why I think it's important when we say it all starts internally. Where yeah. are you at? You know, where, where are you at right now? Where's your heart at? Where's your soul at, yeah. right? And, you know, if you've blinded yourself so, um, so deeply, right, um, Mm. To the point that you're you're stepping into um, a realm which you didn't consent for. That's mm. where the biggest fear is. So I want to kind of really get into um, where this all comes in. Um, yeah. With my experience recently, with the dream I yeah. had last night. Mm. So pretty much, you said it's all about compliance, man. It's all about you know this. People are just allowing things to happen. Victoria was an example. Um, look, you know, we can we can frame the pandemic however we like it. It's yeah. definitely something that's happening all over the world. I've had many yeah. people on my podcast talk about it. Yeah, there is some severity to it, but it's not about the pandemic itself. It's not about the actual yeah. virus. It's about what 
the authorities are doing to respond to it and the measures they're taking. So this is the angle we're looking at and where is this leading if there is an end game, a big picture, a macro, right? I think that's the one thing people, uh, you know, you got to remember, you got to feed a bit of facts yeah. with fiction, right? It's yeah. just yeah. the method. You know, yeah. um, there has to be a virus out there, uh, evident, yeah. evident traceable through the medical yeah. realm. Yeah. Something that we can see, if we're talking about the logical way things work and then the yeah. um, you know, logical emotional brain, we need to get some logic in place, yeah. some facts to be able to deliver yeah. a type of grand plan if there was one, right? And that's just to win the compliance yeah. of people. Now, yeah. my dream, okay? So I was okay. at a bus stop um, and while I was waiting, this bus, this bus stop was somewhere in, in like, out of Sydney, I think it was down the south coast somewhere, and yeah. I, I think I'd gone, you know, just for a couple of days or something like that. And what happened was, I saw a group of, of young women go on the bus, or they were about to go on the bus, and I recognised them, but I didn't know why I recognised them or where, where, where they mm -hmm. were from. But I was in my, I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, I don't know yeah. why I know them from somewhere. Yeah. Anyway. What happened was I start, I decided I'm just going to, I'm going to get on the bus because the bus turned up. One of the women got on the bus and then I, I went in and I asked, is this train, is this bus going to the city? Right? Because I yeah. wanted to head back to Sydney. <laughs> and what happened was the bus driver was like, yeah, once I got on the bus, the whole bus looked like a mobile dungeon. Like, and there were wow. people on it. There were like people mm -hmm. on it, normal people, innocent people. And they yeah. were sitting down and, you know, just, thinking the bus was just going to go on its merry way. Anyway, the yep. second I walked on, I observed the whole landscape. We're talking like wide floors, kind of real grimy type of floors, long walls, yep. grimy yep. type of ceilings. I'm like, yep. it occurred to me, I'm like, fuck, this isn't the right place to be. There's something off with this place and this isn't the bus <laughs> I'm meant to get. So I went straight to the bus driver and I said, look, I've got to get off. Um, I've left, I'm not meant to get on this bus, I've left something at the yep. bus stop. By then, the bus yeah. had already taken off in full blast. And what I noticed was that everybody in the bus also noticed, fuck, this is bad. You know, like, this is bad. Like, we've got, we're going to hell. And what that felt like immediately in my mind was like, this is the train ride uh, that's similar to what I probably seen in, uh, when I went to the concentration camp in Auschwitz. Birkenau because yeah. I went there and yeah. it felt like people innocently being led to the slaughter mm -hmm. and I for one second in my mind was distracted in my mind uh, thinking about who these girls were that I knew from a while ago and I get on the bus and I get fucking hammered by ending up in this bus trip and yeah. I, at that point when I noticed I felt all these forces attack me and it was just mm -hmm. fucking really intense dude and I woke up yeah. I'm like Damn, that yeah. felt real, you know? Yeah. That that reminds me of t two couple of things. One, that scene in uh, The Matrix where Neo looked at the girl with the red dress and then he got sub he got distracted by the girl in the red dress and then he got sabotaged by uh, a, a, an agent, right? Mm -hmm. And then that also, when you say leading people to the slaughterhouse, it's kind of like, where where this whole thing's leading to right is it is it i'm gonna ask some questions like is it leading towards uh vaccination is it leading towards uh, like compulsory vaccination right mandatory vaccination is it leading to you know like like these stimulus packages that we have to go through in order to make a living because people are losing their jobs and you know we've got to comply to this system because people feeling hopeless people are feeling like this is this is the only way because it's only as much as they know and so yeah it's very interesting that you say that because like you said previously you were talking about prophecies right a lot of these things a lot of people like have dreamt certain things happen right and to me it just sounds like you were exposed to a timeline that is a possibility and it's happening for as long as we are consciously creating it Right, because a lot of this is like you know a lot of people going about the day consciously, unconsciously, and for as long as we accept it, it's what's going to happen, and we'll all, we will all end up on that bus. But unless we want to just kick back by the beach, you know, that's that's also an option. Correct. I mean, and I think what one <laughs> one thing is, um, 
is that look we are tied into the collective and there's a lot of yeah. You know, there's a sports, there's a spiritual war going on, right? That's the way I felt. And yeah. I had this discussion with a lot of people over the last few weeks since my time off. And um, man, this this is we're, we're talking. It's not so much that the governments are putting you know these physicalities in place or however you want to put it. There's some deeper, um, deeper interconnected uh, realm from from the spiritual world that is manifesting within the human experience to mm. cause the unfolding of these ex of these events that that we have what would mm. your say be on that for me it's people who are not it's it's a lot of the subconscious like i said first uh previously but it's also suppressing the shadow of the human experience so what we're seeing is really just what we are ignoring and putting aside putting aside like our, our our right to be free uh you know these dark things like you know what we're seeing in like pedophilia the 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 cannibalism all these things that are really like very low 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 vibrational stuff a lot of things that we're ignoring is what we're starting to see surface and so in terms of it's like the pressure of the shadow on a collective level universal yeah. level yeah and you that's, spoke that's about shadow work before I actually yeah. believe shadow work and the integration of the shadow is one of the most important, uh, one of the most important yeah. practices, especially yep. to fight the spiritual war, right? Especially yeah. because mm. you need to know your enemy best, right? Yeah, yes. To fight the battle, right? You yes. need to know your enemy to fight the battle. Why do you say shadow work is important? What's What's the main thing you feel like you've gotten out of it? What I've gotten out of it is wholeness. I've, I've become, I've, I've found myself and this idea of being positive and light 24 seven is, is an, is, is a delusion. Like you can vibrate and bliss and love, but at the same time, there's always going to be that shadow behind you and you can't run away from it. The further you run, the, the harder it's going to chase you. And you're going to put yourself in these cycles where, um, when you meet your shadow, you can either, you know, accept it for what it is or you can continue running from it and that's just going to cause you way more trouble in the future because this is something that's part of the human experience this is something that we have to integrate otherwise we won't be able to move forward because what i see is that people tend to suppress that through medications through drugs through television through social media binging on things just to 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 get away put from on a to put on a mask. Yes. There's so yes. many different things, Dan. And, you know, I think when, 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 you know, when we talk about, you said the integration wholeness, right? And then you said within the human experience, because it's part of the human experience, that is the bridging of duality, right? Understanding, yeah. recognizing the yin and yang, walking this human experience, yeah. saying, hey, this is the bridging of duality. The shadow yeah. needs to come in with the, with the light and we need to be walking together in this human experience. And yeah recognizing what's going on on a macro level so mm -hmm. this comes you know to so coming back to kind of where we're at right now with what's unfolding in the world so i i, I mentioned my dream i, I know i mentioned mm -hmm. the mark of the beast you said you know what what the dream could be maybe what the, 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 that train ride that bus ride could be to for mandate people to get vaccines maybe control people put more pressure on them get them to be under a service system where they're enslaved and they're just given their minimum requirements and needs to stay alive, you know? Um, what, 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 do, what do you think in sit like is gonna be a major event, maybe a possible major event, aside from the vaccines that may occur this year on a world, on a global scale, if you were to put one prediction out there? There's definitely gonna be, there will be, regard, inevitably, there's gonna be rights, there's gonna be a lot of, fight for people's freedom because as we move into the age of Aquarius, which is the age of information, which we just passed through, we are starting to see information explode on the internet and it's just speeding up this awakening process. And so through these, through this fear that the media pushes out, it's only going to put people in the corner and have, and, have them test out whether or not you're going to fight back or comply with the system. And so what I'm seeing this year is 
a lot of rebels, a lot of rebels, just like what the Aquarius is, Aquarius energy is about. And a lot of communities, a lot of communities forming online, um, a lot of communities out in the world. And we're going to start seeing people band together and kind of create their own systems as it's already happening. People are building their own systems online. People are building their own communities online because people have just had enough of the government and what they have to say because eventually they're just, they're just going to expose themselves and Absolutely. people are going to let them go. Man, and one thing, you know, cryptocurrency cryptocurrency came in. That's a new system for money Yeah. Um, yeah. that's starting, created by the people yeah. for the people. Um, yeah. System 333, I actually called it a map of reality for the age of information. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was my headline back in 2018, right? It's at the back of my book. So yeah. people can see that. Um, yeah. And that's why I realized this year, hey, you know, I've got to get on my grind. I've got to write my next mm -hmm. book, my second yeah. and third book. Yeah. Um, and I think one thing is, like you said, Daniel, people now want to start creating their own foundations, own systems yeah. to guide people out of the – not get on that fucking bus, that, that, <laughs> that ride to fucking the dungeon, you know? Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to end up, yeah. you know, being, being a sheep led to the slaughter. Yeah. Um, what's one thing you're going to be doing in 2021? It's pretty much the start of the year, six yeah. days in. Yeah. What, what, what plans have you got? Oh, for me, it's collabing with, collabing with a lot of creators who are speaking the truth, who are living their purpose and who are building a life for themselves. So, and displaying that to people that this is possible and that we can do this together, that we don't have to put our power in the hands of the government. The, the, the word government itself is to govern the mind guide mental and honestly we are a time now where we can govern ourselves there's no need for these people there's no need for these politics who are playing a game to you know to lead you to the slaughterhouse man so for me it's just collabing creating more podcasts creating more videos and you know showing people how to live a better life how to thrive and and really just understand, and really just understand that it's not all that serious you know it's it's a game you know we came here to play it and that, 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 the dog, you know, the dog, the dogs uh, definitely agree that the Matrix is real. <laughs> He's had enough of that as well. Yeah. Zach Star, wait. Yeah. No, that's cool. Um, look, I love the collabs. I love what you've been yeah. doing. I want to see more of it for yeah. uh, 2021. Um, I'd just like to wrap up the podcast. Um, yeah. It's been a really great. Uh, to have you on the show, love to have you again. There was so much more we had to cover. Um, if people could, if people want to reach out to you, I know you've put your you've put your handle here. I don't know if it's going to yeah. be viewable when we upload it, but at Daniel John Allen, is that right on Instagram? Yeah, that's right, man. So Daniel Allen, Daniel John Allen is where you can uh, find my plugs and most of the resources that I share, the videos, guides, um, services as well. So for those who ever need a hand and who feel might might feel like they're lost and that you know, that it's that you might think that it's a hopeless time. It's not, man. It's the best time to be here, and we're in it to win. So, awesome, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much yeah. for coming on the show, and um, we'll see you on next time. Awesome. Thanks for having me, man.